welcome back to my channel. Updating twice in one week. Who would have thought? First. <laughs> Second, this video is a LGBT book rec video, if you couldn't already tell by the title. Today I will be recommending you guys uh, some of my favorite LGBT books, as well as some that I didn't super like. Like, um, I rated them probably four stars, but they're not my favorites, but I know they'll be a lot of other people's favorites because uh, today I'm going to be organizing these books into four categories. Uh, middle grade, young adult, adult, and graphic novels. So I'm going to be giving recs for all ages. Um, I think that is pretty important when you're talking about LGBT books. A lot of the time people only recommend adult books and there's so many children that don't really have access or knowledge of LGBT books uh, and they should. So I wanted to give recs for everyone. If you didn't already know, I am bisexual. I have a beautiful girlfriend and I just wanna be able to share my favorite gay books with the world. I am going to be separating the categories of uh, ages into subcategories. So for example, like adult books, I'm gonna be separating it into uh, adult books with a lesbian character, a bisexual character, a trans character, uh, and a gay character. And I don't have books for each subgenre, but I'm hoping that I can give you guys like a good variety of books to choose from, uh, despite the fact that I have not read every gay book out there or every trans book out there, you know? Before we get started, I just wanted to ask you guys to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Uh, would mean a lot. Still trying to get to 800. I'm now only like 35 subscribers away. So keep subscribing. YouTube is deleting my spam subscribers, which is super annoying. Like what are they doing wrong? Just let them vibe in my subscriber numbers, please and thank you. But without further ado, let's get into this video. So let's start with middle grade. Uh, these aren't generally books that I find myself uh, thinking about like all the time after I've read them. Like I read them, I'm done. I'm like, okay, that was really cute. But I don't spend time like obsessing over it. So it's probably just like the disparity uh, in the ages. Uh, I'm 20, so I read a cute middle grade book and I'm like, super but it's like not relatable if you get me but I know these books will be super relatable to uh, middle schoolers that are looking for some fun gay books with uh, themselves being represented so first I have The Henna Wars by Adiba Jaigadar uh, I've already done a makeup review for this book but I really really love it uh, the main character is a lesbian and she falls in love with uh, Flavia, um, who I think is bi, but I could be wrong. But yeah, it's super cute. It's middle grade. Um, it's got kind of not really enemies, but like rivals to lovers-ish. Uh, and it, it talks about some controversial problems and isn't too sad. So I think this is like a really perfect book for young lesbians to read. It is a very quick and easy read. I rated it five stars uh, just because I'm not the target audience for this book, uh, but for the target audience, it is a five star read. For me personally, it would have been a four star read, but to middle schoolers reading this book, it would probably be five stars for them. I don't want to spend too much time on each book because I have a lot of books to talk about, so I'm going to be going super fast, but I just wanted to be able to fit all of these in here. Next is Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron, and this is a book about a Cinderella retelling, and the main character is a lesbian. In this retelling, the main character uh, is running away from the ball, not to the ball, but from the ball, because at this ball, the men there are able to pick their wives and she does not want to be picked. So she runs off and discovers uh, Constance, who is related to Cinderella, and they get into tons of trouble. Uh, it's a really, really cool retelling and I rated it 
four stars, I think. Uh, but the ending was super cool and unexpected. And I definitely recommend everyone go read this book. Like, I was shocked by the plot twist ending. Super cool, 100% recommend. Next is a book with a bisexual character, and that is Her Royal Highness by Rachel Hawkins. And this is in the YA section at Barnes & Noble, but to me, it really read like a middle grade book. So I'm putting it in the middle grade section because there's nothing in it to me that suggests that it would be YA over middle grade. The main character has just broken up with her girlfriend at the beginning of the book and then goes to a boarding school in Scotland and she becomes roommates slash rivals with a princess uh, from somewhere, Wales? I could be wrong, but it is super duper cute and we get to watch them kind of decide to become friends uh, and stop being rivals and then end up falling in love and it is just super adorable and I recommend to anyone of any age honestly. It's super cute and there's nothing like inappropriate or uh, advanced. Next is my last middle grade book and this is a book with a gay main character and I don't have a middle grade book recommendation with a trans main character, but if you do have one, leave it in the comments below for others to check out. But this book is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe, and while some would say it's YA, I would say it's middle grade. Uh, it is very, very easy to read. Uh, it's a coming of age. It's just super, I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, all the awards on the side describe it pretty accurately. But the main character, Aristotle, is gay or, okay, he could be bi, but I don't really remember and I'm pretty sure it's not specified. But his love interest, Dante, is gay and it is so, so heart-wrenching, like pretty sad for the most part, but also like heartwarming at the same time. I wish I would have read this when I was like 12 when it came out. Uh, it is just so fucking cute and definitely a must read for everyone. I rated it five stars and I have no doubt that you will too. Next is young adult books and my first one is She's Too Pretty to Burn by Wendy Hurd. This book just came out and is so good. <laughs> it is a thriller with a lesbian main character and a bisexual love interest, if I'm correct. But it is very scary. It is about a girl who meets another girl. One of them is shy and the other is very outgoing. The outgoing one takes a picture of the shy one and posts it online and it goes viral. And the shy girl just gets roped into the crazy world of photography and uh, destructive art or um, illegal art, street art and stuff like that. Uh, but at the same time, it's a thriller. The ending is fucking insane. Like I was losing my mind the entire time. And if there's not a sequel, like I'm pretty sure there's no news of a sequel yet, but if there isn't one, I'm going to go crazy actually. It was absolutely five out of five stars for me. Again, this is young adult, so this is getting closer to my age range and books that I find myself thinking about after I finished them and talking about a lot after I finished them. And then another lesbian young adult book, Crier's War by Nina Varela. Look at that. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with this cover. Like I could stare at it all day long. I love it. But it is a book about an automaton kind of person. She's like basically a robot. She's made, uh, her name is Cryer and she's a princess and she's a lesbian and she ends up meeting Ayla who becomes her handmaiden and Ayla hates her and wants to kill her. Uh, so it's an actual enemies to lovers situation we've got going on here and the 
romantic and sexual tension is off the charts. It is so good. And it is about a war and it gets a bit rough at some points. And I'm pretty sure there is a bit of gore in the sequel book, but it's not too much to handle really. Um, if you go onto the Book Trigger Warnings website, I'm sure it will tell you everything you need to know, but it is so, so, so good. And I definitely recommend it uh, to anyone that's at least 13. Next is Running With Lions by Julian Winters. Uh, sports romance, my favorite. I absolutely adore this book. It was five stars for me. The main character, Sebastian, is bisexual and it is a soccer romance uh, where he is the captain of the team and the whole team has a camp that is about three weeks long before school starts uh, and it will be their senior year and Amir, I can't remember which one Amir is though I'm pretty sure it's this one. It could be him though. I could be wrong. They are ex-best friends uh, to annoyances I think uh, not really rivals or enemies but they just didn't like each other uh, to lovers again and it is so cute it's like a camp romance uh, I'm obsessed with it very adorable 10 out of 10 recommend I've seen a lot of bad reviews about it though a lot of people just thought it was boring and childish and that they didn't like it but I at the CEO of sports romance give this my stamp of approval <laughs> Another, I'm pretty sure, bisexual book is The Midnight Lie by Marie Rutkowski, and it is so good. If you're looking for a good fantasy LGBT book, this one's for you. This book is about a girl who I'm pretty sure is bisexual, I'm almost positive. I'm pretty sure she had feelings for one of her friends in the beginning of the book. Like she thought they were supposed to be together, so it could have been like compulsory heterosexuality, but I'm almost positive she's bisexual and her love interest is a lesbian. But uh, she was born into a lower class of citizens who are stuck inside um, their like section of the island, I think it is. Uh, but then she's thrown in prison for killing a soldier and meets Sid, uh, the lesbian in question. And Sid shows her the likes of things she's never seen before outside of her like section of the world that she's seen. Like she hasn't seen anything outside of it. And Sid like takes her on adventures and stuff like that. And it is so, so, so good. It's a bit confusing at first, uh, definitely not for younger readers. Uh, it's kind of graphic towards the end uh, and it's crazy and I definitely definitely recommend this book. Uh, the sequel I know is going to be so so good. And now we have gotten to trans young adult books and my first recommendation is Felix Ever After by Casey Callender. And I've already done a makeup review for this book, but I just wanted to talk about how amazing it is uh, about a trans boy who goes to an art school. Uh, pictures of him before he transitioned were put up like in the art school as like an art fixture, like as a prank. Uh, and he spins the book trying to figure out who did it with his best friend Ezra, who he falls in love with. So it is trans and also uh, a gay romance. I rated this five out of five stars. It is so, so lovely and I absolutely recommend everyone read it. A big trigger warning for transphobia. It is one of the main facets of this book. Uh, so if that is triggering to you, it is probably not for you, but it is such a lovely, lovely book. Uh, and I love Felix love so much. Another trans YA book is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. Oh my god, this book is amazing and I already did a makeup review for it, but just wanted to talk about it again. Uh, the book is about Yadriel, who uh, is a brujo, which is like a witch kind of, uh, and he is supposed to help spirits like move on to the afterlife, and one of those spirits is 
Julian Diaz. And he is so cool. I love Julian so much. I love Yadriel so much. Uh, it is just such a good book. Uh, Yadriel tries to help Julian figure out like how he can pass on and in the process they fall in love. It is so good. Oh my god, I would talk about this book all day. It is amazing and it's making me want to reread it talking about it and I don't have time for that so I'm gonna stop but I rated it five stars and you all, every single person out here needs to read it. That is it for YA, so let's get into adult LGBT books. All right, so my first lesbian adult recommendation is Her Name in the Sky by Kelly Quinlan, and holy God, literally, I love this book. Uh, it is so beautiful. Uh, there are big themes of like religious trauma and internalized homophobia, uh, so if that triggers you, then this might not be for you. There's also a lot of external homophobia as well. Uh, just a warning for that. Uh, it is amazing. Uh, they're still in high school, but I classify it as adult uh, because it has a graphic sex scene in it. And I pretty much classify anything with a graphic sex scene in it as adult. But this book is about a girl and her best friend. The main character is a lesbian and her best friend is bisexual uh, and they don't realize this until the end of the book, obviously, but it is so good. Oh my God. Uh, and Hannah, the main character, falls in love with her best friend, Baker, uh, and she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to feel like that uh, and asks God to make her not feel like that. But uh, it is so lovely. The religious imagery is beautiful uh, and it's just absolutely all around gorgeous. I read it in like two days. Uh, real quick and I rated it five stars and I need you all to go read this book. It is so 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 good Next is one of the first sapphic books that I ever read uh, It is so cute and I'm gonna say it's That Persephone is a lesbian it never says I think but it is a sapphic Hades and Persephone retelling where Hades is a woman and oh my god it's beautiful. The writing is so lovely. It's pretty short, um, but it's amazing. In this, uh, Persephone isn't forced to go to the underworld. She wants to stay there, uh, and Hades kind of shows her around and things, and then Persephone falls in love with Hades, and it is very, very cute and pretty hot, <laughs> so I would definitely recommend you go read this. However, big big trigger warning for rape in the first one or two chapters. I would recommend uh, using caution when reading this book if that is one of your triggers. Even if it's not one of your triggers, it's kind of brutal. So please make sure to prepare yourself for that or skip it. Next we have Honey Girl and this book is so so good. It is about a girl who has just gotten her PhD or master's, I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure it's a PhD, in astronomy and she cannot find a job uh, as a black woman uh, in STEM. Uh, it is very difficult for her to find a job so she has to work at a coffee shop and she's really losing like faith in herself um, and it's really just about her journey like figuring out who she is and what she wants in life uh, and she is a lesbian. Uh, and the love interest is also a lesbian and they got married in Vegas while drunk uh, and then they find each other and kind of like build their relationship and it's really really cute uh, and beautifully written like I can't even explain to you how beautiful it is like reading it is like looking through rose colored goggles. I rated it five stars it is just so so good the representation is amazing and I absolutely recommend it to any adult looking for a good lesbian book. Next is a book I'm only halfway through, but honestly, it's pretty good and definitely something I'll recommend as an adult lesbian book. And that is First Position by Melissa Braden. And I didn't really like it at first and the writing is kind of like off, but I'm pretty into it now and the main characters are both lesbians and they are ballerinas who get cast for the same part uh, and 
they're kind of annoyances at first, like not, mm, they were rivals because they were competing for the same spot. So they were kind of rivals to lovers, but it is super duper cute and I love their relationship and I cannot wait to finish this book. I'm probably gonna rate it about four stars. Next is my favorite book in the entire world. Like no book will ever, ever compare to this book, but I do not recommend it for everyone. It is not for everyone. Please, please look up the trigger warnings before reading this book. It is insane. Any trigger you can think of in these books. So please look them up. However, it is the best book I've ever read in my entire life and I will stand by that forever. The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovic. While there is really absolutely no romance uh, of any sort until the last book, and I would hesitate to call it romance. I still think it's pretty relatable as the main character Neil didn't even like realize that he was attracted to men like at all, and he isn't really like, Neil can be classified as like demisexual, uh, and a lot of people do because he states that the only one he's interested in is Andrew, uh, but Andrew is explicitly gay, uh, and it is just, don't even get me started. Do not get me started on this book. I, like, this is why I have not done a review for it yet, because I could just talk about it all day, and that is a problem. The video would be like five hours long. But the romance slash relationship, more like, is, insane. It is so fucking good. It's just the fact that Neil's idea of safety is so intertwined with his idea of Andrew that he had no choice but to fall in love with him. And it never explicitly says the words love, but I think it in my head, so it's real. Anyways, five stars. 100% five stars across the board for this book. It is not for everyone and some people don't like it. They're not triggered by it, but they don't like it. I think it's a piece of art that belongs in the MOMA, but whatever. Okay, I need to stop talking about this book. I'm talking way too fast. Okay, anyways, love it. Absolutely adore Neil Jostin, best character in the entire universe. And next is a very popular book uh, with a bisexual main character and a gay love interest. And that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Uh, this is a book about, they're not really enemies. Like I only classify enemies to lovers as people that want to kill each other to lovers. So it's not really enemies to lovers. It's just like hatred to lovers, but it is so fucking cute between the uh, son of the president of the United States and the son, a prince, he's a prince. He's the Prince of Wales or something like that. Uh, and they hate each other, but then they're forced to do things together because they ruined a wedding and they need good publicity with each other. Uh, so they do that and then they become friends and then they fall in love. And it is so fucking cute. Uh, I already did a review for that. It was my very first video. So if you wanna check that out, you can. Um, I rated it five stars. Casey McQuiston's writing is really, really, really good. I think they really, did a good job like uh, kind of explaining like when someone like doesn't know that they're gay like while growing up like a lot of books like talk about how they knew they were gay growing up and then some people like don't realize it until they're like adults and that is what happens with Alex uh, who I love and I just think it's such a cute book it is again an adult book uh so i only recommend it to adults uh but all adults go read this it is super fucking cute next is the intimacy experiment by rosie danen and this is not an lgbt romance but the main character is bisexual she states it multiple times that she's bisexual and she talks about how it's affected her life uh, and i just wanted to include a book where a bisexual person ended up with someone of the opposite gender but it illustrated how that did not diminish their bisexuality. I think Rosie Danen did a really good job with this and I fucking love Naomi Grant so much. She is a queen, she is powerful, and she doesn't let anyone tell her anything. 
Like, it's so good. I love her so much. I gave the Intimacy Experiment, I want to say four stars. Uh, but still, Naomi Grant is really good representation for bisexual women, and I definitely think all adults should go read it. And lastly, we have uh, graphic novels. I only have three to recommend you guys today, but they're all really, really good, and I'm really excited to talk about them. First is Cheer Up, Love and Pom Poms, and this is a very quick graphic novel. You can definitely read it in less than an hour. Uh, it is just really cute, like a small little story about a lesbian girl that is joining the cheer team and uh, she ends up falling in love with the cheer captain who is a trans girl uh, who hasn't yet figured out her sexuality but it is adorable and I absolutely recommend it to like anyone of all ages. However, there is, I'm pretty sure, homophobia and transphobia. So definitely make sure to use caution when reading it, but it is adorable and I really, really loved it. It's also not out yet. Uh, I just wanted to apologize for that. Next is Check Please. Uh, oh my God, this book is so fucking cute. Uh, I love the art style. It's just like, absolutely gorgeous uh, and Biddy the main character means everything to me uh, he's a legend icon star he's gay and the love interest Jack is also gay uh, they are so cool I love sports romance it means everything to me so this was a perfect read I rated it five stars uh, basically Biddy is a figure skater who got a scholarship to play hockey um, in college so he is now on the hockey team even though he didn't really play hockey before and it is so cool he has little video diaries and he bakes and it is just all around such a good graphic novel and the sequel is also really good and last but not least heartstopper by alice osman and this is so fucking cute i read all three books in like a day it is so 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 good uh the main character is gay and his love interest is bi and this is charlie and nick and it is just so 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 cute they become friends and uh it's really just their romance of becoming friends into something more and then dealing with having to come out in high school and just like their lives and their romance like mixing. There is a lot of homophobia in this book though. It's not like graphic or violent in any way. It's just a lot. So utilize caution reading this, but it is so fucking cute and it's getting a TV show that I'm so, so, so excited for and I absolutely recommend it. But that is it for my LGBT book rec video. I hope you guys enjoyed this and you got some really good recs out of it or you liked listening to me talk about your favorite LGBT books. My raw footage is at 47 minutes which is fucking insane so super gonna be real fun editing this. <laughs> but yeah this was super fun and I might do another video like this in the future once I've read a couple more uh, LGBT books but that is it for today. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to be posting next week. I'll figure it out next week. But yeah, until then, I will see you guys later. Bye.